Steve Hamilton is the president of the Australian Medical Association. He joins us now from Brisbane. Steve Hamilton, good morning and thank you for taking some time. Good morning. First of all, we're just going off reports on this this morning. Is this something that your organisation has heard about as well? No, this is something brand new and we did warn of course that if you increase the barrier to get to GPs that uh, people would choose other, other sources and emergency departments might be one of them. Look, the issue uh, is are these people clogging up emergency departments and the answer is no. Uh, uh, low level or low acuity patients which, uh, which some are describing as GP patients are not the problem. They don't clog up the departments, they're easy to manage, they can safely wait while more urgent cases get treated and look, the real problem in emergency departments is capacity in the hospital to get inpatients into the hospital. So before we think of a solution, we've actually got to go back and say, is this the problem? And frankly, they're not the problem. So this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist? Well, frankly, it doesn't. And I, mean, I, I think we should say, of course, that if uh, you have an illness that a, a GP can treat, that's where you should be. And, uh, but, but people don't go to emergency departments generally because they think they've got a minor illness. They think they're serious and they think they need serious help. Now we do categorise people who turn up in the emergency department to, to low acuity, which means they can safely wait, but some of those patients still get admitted to hospital. Uh, look, the, the issue with hospital emergency departments, and we've been doing better over the last couple of years, is overall capacity, overall um, clinical, des the, the design of how we treat people in those departments. So we, if we're going to solve the, the healthcare problems long term, we can't do piecemeal solutions. We've actually got to think about increasing access to general practice, appropriate use of emergency departments, actually minimising the costs long term. And we're really talking about those big issues, tobacco, alcohol, over-nutrition and under-exercise. That'll turn around our structural problem with our health costs. Let me just take you through quickly a couple of points that we've made there in passing. You mentioned right at the very bat about increasing the barriers to seeing GPs and that the AMA warned that that would cause problems. What do you mean by that? What did increase the barrier to seeing a GP? Well, uh, we've heard this $6 co-payment uh, issue and it's been talked about for a couple of months. Um, you know, you talk about, we, we look at uh, structural health reform. Internationally, we've got the Lancet think tank saying if you want a better, more efficient health service, lower the barriers to primary care. GPs are where preventive health care takes place. They're, they're where chronic disease is managed. Uh, if we increase the barriers there, people may not turn up, and even six dollars sometimes means people don't get a. I understand uh, that, but, but we don't we don't have that that um, co-payment in place at the moment. So, what do you say are the the barriers that have been increased that exist right now? Well, I, I think 81% uh, of our GPs are bulk billing, so the barriers in Australia are actually uh, pretty low. That's a good thing. Um, what we do need to make sure is people do get to see their GP; they are treated properly. And if we are looking at solutions uh, for the health system, we need to think about what the, what the real structural problems are. Okay. Now, in these, um, these articles this morning, what seems to be, a, a, at least to me, a, a drop by the federal government to, sort of to, to fly this proposal, the figure that's mentioned, the cost to emergency departments around the country, mm. is put at $1 billion of treating what they call these minor ailments. Does that seem about right to you? No, again, that seems uh, far in excess of what it really costs. Look, we've got emergency departments already built. Uh, the, the, uh, the category four and five patients are actually marginal costs. They, they, need to, they need to be staffed and open. We need to have them there for the high acuity patients, people who have heart attacks, people who have car accidents. If there's a, a few extra low acuity patients who could be seen by a GP, they won't cost a billion dollars. They aren't the problem in the system. We do need to encourage them to go to general practice. By adding a co-payment really isn't the solution. Uh, so we've got to be really realistic about the healthcare costs and solve the real problems, yes. not the side issues. Well, does this seem then to you to be a, a potential revenue grab if you say it's a solution to a problem that doesn't actually exist? Well, it's a distraction really from the, from the big issues. Look, we're happy to engage with the government to talk to them about how we deal with those big issues. Uh, suggesting to a patient now that we've seen you and made a diagnosis that it's a minor problem, we're now going to slap you with a charge, is, very, is, is pretty unfair. People think they're going there for serious problems. They're not, they're not medically trained. They may be wrong. So we've got to look at uh, the overall fairness of this thing. Uh, and it's really not going to solve the structural issues that uh, the government hopes it's going to solve. We don't want to plug gaps. Let's sit down together with some... Uh, with some you know, intelligent people working at the front line of healthcare and, and look at system redesign. That's what we should be talking about. 